Dutch represent all my island people say We people celebrating all it from my homeland Like my old man say there's nothing impossible So we have to bring this message to my brother Lyrica Previously on Delos We sail deep into the rivers of French Guiana Meet some unique wildlife He wants to film with the GoPro yeah, look at that. And by chance, get invited to watch a rocket launch are you guys ready to go to the Caribbean? No, crazy man. Yes. Yeah, I Once think we so. leave, we'll be there in approximately four days. It is crazy. The Caribbean is the mecca of cruisers. And chances are, if you're a sailor, you've been there before. Not for Delos and her crew though. The past eight years have taken us west around the globe and to this point, right on the front door of the Caribbean. So, quick fact, if we did the exact same sail we did to get here, if we did that again, we'd be in Miami. Yep. How crazy is that? Whoa. We're really close. <laughs> Ready to get to some tropical islands with some steel drums, some rums, and a lot of cruisers, I think, too. It's gonna be a huge cruiser's destination. Very different. Yeah, very different. We've been alone for like years. <laughs> and how long is this passage? 520 miles or something like that. Our navigation system has failed. I don't know what's going on with it, but it keeps on losing position every few seconds. Of course, it happens right as we get into the channel and right into the part where it's like, the buoys were really far apart, like three or four miles, so you really can't see between them. <laughs> but luckily we kind of like remember where they were on the chart and we can use the binoculars to take uh, dead reckon uh, sights. And then we're just going compass positions. There is a little bit of a current setting us to the west. So we've had to head a little bit more up into the breeze to compensate for that. But our next mark is coming up now. And it's, the, it's a yellow buoy up here uh, with the two triangles pointed together, I think. Which means that we need to keep that one to port. And then after that we have two more sets of marks and then we're out of here. Yeah. But it's a little more hectic than coming in. It was real peaceful now we've got 20 knots and we're going into it and we have no navigation. And Brady, you said the weather is going to be a bit more. Yeah, it should be more right now. It was saying northeast, it's like 30. Okay. And now it's east at like 15 or 20. Our parents 20. Is this supposed to be 30 down here? Yeah. At this point, all we can do is make the best of the conditions. And once over the shallowest area, trim the sails and troubleshoot our nav instruments. Go, Luke, go! Well guys, welcome to your life for the next three to five days, depending on the wind. Okay. Cruising. Oh, there it is! Thank you so much. So I'm talking about blue. It's a good life. <laughs> <laughs> and... I got the navigation system fixed. Is it still working? That's exciting. It's not making any crazy noises. So okay, so cool. So we know where we are again. Mm -hmm. Turned out I just had to tweak the antenna. So like the Wi-Fi antenna and the little electronics cabinet had somehow worked its way and was touching the power converter, which I don't think was good for oh. it. Oh. So it wasn't a good signal, but now we're back in business. Back I think in we'll see. That's it, we've left South America behind for now. And the conditions are pretty freaking good. Got like 20 knots right on the beam, going like nine and 10 knots. And we only have like 480 miles left until we get into Tobago. What's up, Signore? Pretty good conditions, brother. Is it? Doesn't get much better than this, man. Yeah. Good speed, good wind. Good speed, good wind. Bright moon, no ships, nice. flat water. I'm on it, I'm on the case. Our first night at sea was ideal, and the next morning brought even better conditions. We're doing really well though. Yeah? 
we've already gone 140 miles. Oh, that's nice. And we have 380 to go. Conditions so good that we fell right into the passage rhythm. I watched movies and I slept for the better half of the day. I listened to music. I stared at the water. All right, senor, it's been 24 hours since we've exited the river. Yep. Hey, Blue, how many miles have we gone in the last 24 hours? What's your best guess? 100, no, uh, 199. Uh, 144. No, no, 124. Two, okay. <laughs> you guys are like the slowest guessers in the world. I'm gonna I'm guess to do nice. 203. Three. I'm gonna go with 180, 180 miles. The answer is? 175. Oh, 175. We slowed down. 315 miles to go. Not so bad, huh? Not so bad at all. For the next 40 or so hours, we didn't film very much. We just enjoyed the peace and quiet of the open ocean. Those hours went by so fast, and before we knew it, we were about to make landfall. It's been a really good night watch, and it feels crazy that we might beat it tomorrow. The wind has calmed down, but we're still hooning along at like six, seven knots, which is really nice. The moon is full and bright. The conditions are awesome. I've decided to celebrate with a Snickers bar. Nothing better than that. And a hot tea. But I'm mostly happy about the Snickers. <laughs> anyway, good night. Land ho! I see it. The clouds have finally cleared and I can see Tobago. I'm so excited! <laughs> That's gotta be one of the coolest things about sailing. Like it's one thing to cruise up the coast. It's pretty awesome, but to sail to a freaking island and watch it appear on the horizon is pure, pure magic. Everybody should experience that once in their life for sure. And it just makes me think like, it has to look almost exactly the same as it does when it first got discovered, you know? hundreds of years ago and someone for the first time sailed up to this island and they were like holy f this place is gorgeous i'm gonna stay here and then the rest is history and now here we are let's do it gotcha. i like dolphins when you arrive places it's really cool that's the way it goes, Blue. That means we're gonna have a good time. Sweet! Wow, they're really good. Yeah, there's one here. Look at that guy. He's like a yeah. small whale. It's always a good omen. Uh, the history of the island is that Christopher Columbus discovered a Trinidad in 1498, but never mentioned Tobago. The island later made up for this neglect by changing hands more frequently than perhaps any other Caribbean island. For two centuries, the Dutch, English, and French fought for control. The Treaty of Amiens gave Tobago to France, but the island was ceded to Great Britain in 1814. For a while, the island was declared neutral territory. This, however, made it irresistible to pirates, and Tobago turned into such a dangerous outpost of rogues that in 1762, the British invaded just to clear them out. You know what that means, Casa? Treasure. Wow. Hidden treasure. Alex is right. Every time we sail into a new country, I can't help but think what it must have been like to be on an old tall ship heading into port, dropping the anchor. So hook ready? Hop hop. 
raising the Q flag. We are officially under quarantine. Q flag going up. And that feeling of excitement of the unknown on land. Welcome to Charlottesville, Tobago. Although many things have changed since the tall ship days, like our nav systems, electric winches, and dinghy engines, there are a few things that have remained constant among all sailors throughout time. Once checked in with the local government officials, it's time to find some local currency and head for a pub. And a building and an oil well. Okay, let's go eat and drink. Hi. We're hungry and thirsty. You're hungry and thirsty. What do you like to do? We come to the right place. Yeah, I think so. I'm just gonna ask for some local rum. We want the rum that that guy has over there. We can't have it. We can't handle it. We can't handle it. Oh, I think we can handle it. Maybe a small bottle and we split it. She's breaking down. I can tell. Look at in her eye. Yeah. I'm not breaking down. What if we like, drink it with... Uh, like if you got some, I'll be very wicked. Really? Mm -hmm. You promise? I'll be very wicked to give you that one. We would. We make our own rum on the boat. 75%. No problem. That is more than 75%. Is it? More than 70. It says 75 on the label. <laughs> Don't watch the label. <laughs> but I would, I would drink mine with a Coke. Yeah, not straight. Just a Coke. Yeah. I just drink that rum. And the best tracer for that rum is either this or this. Okay. We'll take one of these, one of those, and the bottle of the wicked rum. It's a rum, it, it, it won't give you a hangover. Oh, but But if your man is not next to you, Oh, it's oh, one of those rooms. Oh, a special room. <laughs> My man is right here. <laughs> well, let me come on. Okay. <laughs> Sweet, man. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. We can sign a waiver if you want. It's no problem. <laughs> you can sign this one. <laughs> Maybe things have changed more than I realize. I doubt sailors 200 years ago had to convince the barmaid they could handle the local rum. Locally, it's called punchin and has been produced here since the 1600s. The label says it's 75% alcohol by volume, but nobody really knows the true strength. Our friend from behind the bar gave in and was now showing us how to properly mix and drink the wicked rum with lemon lime and bitters. Mm. That's a good ratio, you know how to make a good drink. <laughs> so this is 75%, huh? It says 75% genuine strength. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> I like it. Did you hear that? Bro? What? If you add water to that, it gets stronger. <laughs> <laughs> it's a unique property of this rum. Wow. It's pretty strong, but... It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Oh, let's dig into it. <laughs> That's the way to do it, huh? <laughs> she just... You just put us to shame. She's cool, man. Good first day. To our surprise, we didn't go crazy on the Wicked Rum and actually made it back to Delos at a reasonable hour. In the morning, it's time to get some work done. It's going down outside right now. It's dumping rain and now it just started blowing squall duty so we're just checking to make sure we're all good and everyone else is all good how are you guys feeling from that rum last night a little bit off yeah, maybe this will help you. Uh, what did you do? Uh, what did you do? Ham and cheese. Oh, ham and cheese omelets. Thank you so much, Brian. Thanks, Will. Yeah. You're the best. The best. So we woke up a while ago because the boat 
was rolling like crazy and the dinghy was hitting the water. <laughs> it's not a very comfortable swell today. So we're gonna go in and sit at the library as long as it opens, I think. And yeah, just do some work, some internet stuff. Ooh, wow, look at this. Is there any limit? Because we need to upload quite a large file to, uh, is it like, like we need to upload a file that's like five gigabytes or something? No, no? Okay. okay. Although it's only our second day in Tobago, we have a lot of work to catch up on and a lot of footage to edit. Good morning. It is our third day in Charlotteville. It's cool, it's nice. It's got a good vibe, it's very chill here. It's just a bunch of rasta dudes hanging out. It's very mellow. Everybody's like just drinking beers and smoking a lot of marijuana. And uh, Alex has some friends in town, uh, Sean and Katie. From the same town that I grew up in, in California, just happens to be here in Tobago with his girlfriend. They have a car, they're here on a holiday, so we might go cruise around the island with them today. It's our first day exploring, Blue. Let's go! We're gonna explore Tobago. This is Sean and Katie, yeah. and they're from California too. We happen to run into each other in a small island. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Not, not in the Caribbean. Not very likely. But um, they have a car, so we're going to go adventure around. Tobago. So right now we're here, and we're talking about going down to Speyside, because apparently that's where all the roadies are. And then going down over here, because there's a place called Argyle Falls, which is supposed to be pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. And then maybe looping back up around here. So, that's the plan so far. How crazy you have friends besides us. So random. <laughs> like, I don't know, the chances of that are not high, but it's definitely nice to see a familiar face. Hey, the good see. She asked if Alex's was my daughter. That's weird. Yeah. That means you're her uncle. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> what does that make me? Come on, little one. <laughs> my mom. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. That's weird. Say I am your mother. It always feels so good to go on our first hike because after being at sea <laughs> it's just such a different feeling to walk through a freaking forest and walk through the mud and just all the sounds and the smells I don't know it's it's exact opposite of the ocean so it's always like so refreshing wow the jungle here is pretty cool that's a big tree yeah huge this rainforest we're hiking in isn't incredibly healthy and beautiful by accident according to unesco this area of tobago is the oldest protected forest in the entire world on april 13th 1776 this area was established to guarantee a rainforest climate for the surrounding crops. They knew early on if the rainforest disappeared, the crops in the surrounding hills would be destroyed from lack of water. 
It took 11 years to convince the British Parliament that this was a worthy cause. It's amazing to think that over 200 years ago, the first act in the modern environmental movement took place here on this tiny island in the Caribbean. The protection of this forest has paid off and sustained the local crops such as cocoa, bananas, coffee, and citrus for centuries. On top of that, the jungle brings in tourists from all over the world and another source of income for the locals. Is this all bamboo mm -hmm. that you're using? Yeah. You check it out, man. Check it out. Let's see what's cool. going on. You know, intervene, man. Get yourself involved. Never know if you're going so to you paint it. You paint it all black. Yeah, I strip the skin. Then I go have to paint it. Then I have to draw and start a carving again. So That's good. It's a bit of work, you know, and then details. So it's time and process. I have to do them by stages, you know. And then you're just enjoying a nice smoke while you do it. Yeah, I gotta have the meditation, man. Meditation gotta be straight up. Good for the mind. Yeah, straight up, man. <laughs> it's very cool. Stay humble, you know. Stay calm. That's the way you gotta be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is one, you know? I don't know if you're going to see anything you like, maybe you might want to give me a little support still, you know, get something up in the forest. Yes, yeah, so I got this, I got this for in. my mom, and this for us. I like manta rays. It's okay, the only one I think I have right now, I have to make some. I'm not fresh, you know, I just kind of, I'm putting this epoxy coating on them right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm That's bringing good. back some of my little old wood that I had in there, mm. bring them back to life. He's one who just came up back last night. You know? Back to life. Yeah, man, I brought him back this morning, you know. <laughs> Today is a really exciting day because we're going to start to do some diving. We decided yesterday I think the weather is going to be really good over the weekend. Yeah, we're going to go to a spot around the corner called the Sisters. And it's a bunch of rocks that are like two miles offshore from the island. And it drops down to 20 to 30 meters around them. And the conditions are perfect because there's like a big high pressure system coming in. So the wind's going to be really light out of the northeast. And the swell is dropping for the next two days. And then Monday, it comes back. So we're getting pretty close to the islands now, but I don't know. I always find when we come up to them like this. <laughs> it looks real gnarly. Wow, how big so? I think once you get underwater, it's all good. It's the hardest part is gonna be either whether we dive from the boat, which is sketchy, because then we have to get the boat close to the rocks. But getting stuff to and from the dinghy is always a bitch when it's like this. There's also a pretty strong current too. <laughs> like two knots. I think if we get close to the kind of western point of that far rock and we can jump in there, looking by the current, we should be able to come this way instead of the original plan of going that way. And then we'll probably just pop, instead of trying to go around, maybe we'll pop up. Or maybe we'll go around and pop up on the downwind side. So it's a bit hectic in here and there's some shallow water. I don't really feel comfortable getting Delos any closer to the rocks. So our plan is we're gonna kinda go up here, put the bow up into the wind, and uh, Brady and Alex are gonna jump in, and then I'm gonna go in the dinghy, throw out a line and just tow them into the rock. What do you think? Okay. I think it'll work. Hey Karen, I'm gonna swim to the dinghy. <laughs> it's really hectic. It's really hectic out here. And being in the water and the swells and there's a lot of current, it's. I don't know, I guess that's why it's such a good dive site, but. It's always a bit intense. Diver delivery service! Funny enough, I'm going too fast. It's actually so much current that they're barely moving. I don't know about this, man. It's pretty rough out here, but we're making it. I'm just pulling them over to the island. 
I just didn't want to get Delos close because it's quite gnarly and if anything happens to the engine, we'd be f***ed. So I'm just pulling them. Okay, hey bro, if for some reason you end up on the wrong side, I'll find you. Okay, Bye. have fun guys. So Brian is back at the boat now. It was a little stressful pulling them. Yeah. In the dinghy like that because it's hard to hold on. You've got waves hitting you and you have a lot of gear you know, on. You have a lot of gear on and it's like very hectic. And, but they did all right. I think uh, they were breathing a little bit hard, you know. Yeah. But I dropped them off at the rocks and then they were able to go down pretty soon. After that tiring tow against the current, we used almost a quarter of our air from 200 bar down to 150. But once underwater, everything goes quiet. You become weightless, time slows down, and you can focus on breathing slowly. To our surprise, Tobago is some of the healthiest coral we've seen in the past eight years. The first thing that popped into my head was memories of our time underwater in Raja Ampat, Indonesia, where every tiny piece of the reef is covered in living organisms. I can't help but compare it to a bustling city from above. So what makes the coral so healthy here in Tobago? It all comes down to the currents. Where we're diving happens to be the exact point where strong ocean currents bring nutrient-rich water from both the North and South Atlantic Ocean. The North setting equatorial current works its way up the Brazilian coast and runs right into Tobago. At the same time, the North Atlantic high brings swell and surface currents from the east. Lots of currents means lots of fresh nutrients, which feed the entire food chain. dropping you guys off sorry about that but I, I i think that was the right it was the right call yeah i think for you guys cool. you can jump in the water and we'll put your gear in the dinghy from the water yeah. and then we'll drive you over you yeah there's a little spot out here where we can get the dinghy along the boat oh there is yeah okay. it's like not so much for the next few days the weather remained perfect for diving so we took advantage of all the bottom time we could get And for our last dive of the day, we accidentally found a shipwreck. <laughs> this wreck was actually sunk recently by a local dive shop, but it hadn't been placed on any dive guides, so we had no idea what we just found. What are the odds of that? <laughs> <laughs>
saw this sort of shade in the distance. I just zoom over to it. I'm like, holy shit, there's a shipwreck there. <laughs> that was like one of my favorite days ever. <laughs> you got so excited too, I'm like so stoked. <laughs> And then Brady was like, well, they like taking pictures of soft porn. <laughs> and I was like, Brady! <laughs> Get away! I'm like, I'm like oh, shining wow. my light in sh <laughs> <laughs> What just happened? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was like one of my favorite dives. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. And it's like, if you can't see like a hundred foot shipwreck, like 15 feet away from you. Yeah. Imagine all the other things you missed, right? I know. Crazy. Wow. That's, yeah, one of the craziest times I've ever done. So we had some incredible diving yesterday. Uh, we're just filling the tanks now, but we woke up a little while ago and the weather overnight has just turned to... The weather forecast is actually not looking great. So instead of sitting here in a squally anchorage, we've decided to head out a few days early and actually just go to Trinidad, pull up there while the weather is poor and uh, wait for our patrons to come join us. And then we'll continue on to Grenada and hopefully come back here because the diving was freaking fantastic. Yep. Can you hear what the hell he's saying up there? All I heard is <laughs> <laughs> that, Yeah, that's it. Grunts and moans. <laughs> and a weird little, look at that hand gesture. What does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? What does that hand gesture mean, senor? Straight down. Straight down. <laughs> that's, that's forward, that's port, that's starboard. Okay. That's stern. That's straight down. Okay. What does straight down mean? What am I supposed to do? Go to that. Okay, up. Bye bye for now, Tobago. Yeah, but I definitely think we should come back. I think Everything's so close though. Yeah. It's not like days yeah. and days of sailing, it's like 12 hours of sailing. Yeah. So we just see a good window window when we're in, you know? Yeah. And come back here and. Jet over and dive it up. Dive, dive it up. I at least want like maybe 10 to 20 more dives here. Yeah, for sure. This is just a little teaser. Yeah. Squeeze teaser. Coming up on Delos, we explore the jungles of Trinidad and experience the insane parties of Carnival. Taste like? It tastes like a little bowl of Chinese. Ooh! Shinwasu. Oh, yeah, hair there. Hair? Oh. Yeah. Senior Brady hair. Sometimes he puts his nipple hairs in for Ooh. added flavor. Ooh. Beers in the fridge for arrival beers. We're going to drink some beers in Tobago. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to the lush, jungular island of Tobago. Uh, Tobe Tobago takes its roots from the old Indian trade of the 1970s. Of when? Of the 1970s. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Wow. Tobago founded 1984 by the East <laughs> Indian Company. <laughs> <laughs> the ice machine is fell over and emptied all of its water into where our spices are. Great. So now our spices are moving along in the water, gulping in there. 
glow, 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 glow thing in there. That's good. It's time to chill out a bit. So I'm really excited. <gasps> oh! Holy shit! Is that the beer truck or the chicken truck? Beer truck, my beer truck. 